Hey friends, when making music in any DAW, you're presented with so many options that sometimes it's easy to get what I like to call lost in the sauce. Or in other words, there are so many ways you could go with the sounds that you're creating that you end up fiddling with parameters for hours and hours and all of a sudden it's 4 a.m. and you're not anywhere closer to finishing the music than you were when you started. Now productivity is a giant subject and there are many ways you could approach being more efficient at music production, but in today's video I'd like to focus on one thing that I feel like everyone struggles with at some point, commitment. I'm going to lay out four reasons why it's absolutely crucial for you to learn how to commit to sounds early and often, and how this one thing could change your music career forever. And as always, if you feel like you've gained something from this video, a sub and a bell really does a lot for the channel. My music and social links are down below if you want to connect with me. Let's get it. Okay, so what do I mean by audio commitment? I mean, if you have a part that you've created and you're relatively happy with how it sounds, record it or resample it to audio and move on to the next thing. Now, commitment could look many different ways, and of course, I don't mean to have zero effect chains or zero MIDI VSTs in your set, just that most of the time, you eventually decide, okay, that's good enough, and you bounce that track down to audio. Modern DAWs like Ableton Live allow you to approach music making from a variety of angles. One of these is the ability to make MIDI clips with all your notes and chords, then send them through giant chains of instruments and effects where everything you do is tweakable or changeable at any time. Back in the day before computer music, folks wrote songs and learned them thoroughly before going to the studio so they could sit down once and lay down the part without having to go back and re-record it over and over again, thus saving money. The difference in these modern times is truly how much you can leave on the table. If you have MIDI tracks everywhere with multiple MIDI instruments and long lists of effect chains, you could literally change any aspect of the sound at any time. This is such a powerful thing and we are so blessed to be living in the best time in history to make music. However, this leaving of all the options on the table can also be a pitfall. There's a reason why one of the main YouTube searches for musicians is how do I actually finish a song? There are so many producers out there who are lost in the sauce. While again, there are many ways that we could discuss how to increase song output and productivity, this video is gonna hopefully give you a concrete and helpful tip that you can take with you. My angle is this. Commitment means making the conscious choice to commit sounds that you create early and often instead of leaving a bunch of options on the table. This, I promise, will change your musical life for the better. And this took me decades to learn because I was stubborn. Back in the day when I was at the height of the Dunning-Kruger effect, I was a stalwart defender of leaving every track totally editable in every single way. My thinking was, if I commit this track to audio, what if I get down the line and I want to change what I've done down the road? And yeah, on the surface level, this is a really good argument, but there's a reason why literally all of the pro producers that I'm friends with that have been in the game for decades all eventually learn to commit more and more of their MIDI and effect chains to audio early and often. Let's get into the reasons why. Now this first one may come as a surprise, but the first thing we're going to talk about is variety. If you choose to start committing your tracks to audio, what you'll also find is that you'll have more time to create different versions of the same sound. Instead of having a disorganized mess of automated parameters that you'll later have to sift through, you can instead tweak a manageable amount of parameters, commit the output to audio, go back again, and then do that same part a different way. This is a central workflow to most producers that I know, and I show in this video up here how you can speed this process up even faster with Ableton's new comping feature in 11. Variety is the spice of life, and if you've ever heard music that's highly edited, chances are that instead of the artist using stupidly long chains of effects in literally over a hundred tracks, more likely they were using one track and resampling little snippets of audio and then sequencing those clips throughout their tune. And that brings me to number two, which is editing speed. Now this may seem obvious, but until you experience the difference that commitment makes, it's hard to overstate the power that you'll feel when your tracks come together at five times the speed. Now, of course speed isn't everything, and those long nights that I've spent tweaking one sound are special and sentimental to me. But for me, and I imagine for many people, inspiration is a fickle beast, one that can leave just as fast as it arrives. If you've ever had an idea that you're excited about, that's when speed and efficiency are super important. Inspiration is like a good breeze when you're sailing a boat. You want to catch the wind and ride it as far as it can get you. If you get stuck on one sound for too long, that ship could have sailed and you're back in dead water. 
So cultivating the skill of not only being able to capture your ideas, but also being able to effectively create the kind of sounds you're going for confidently and effectively is super important. And real quick, if you're enjoying this video and my teaching style, I have two courses specifically pertaining to both of those growth edges. The first is Songwriting and Composition with Ableton Live, where I show you how to use the software to get the music out of your head and into the computer with the quickness. And then the second one is Sound Design and Synthesis with Ableton, where I show you how to open any synth or VST instrument and know what to do for any sound that you're going for, any sound you're trying to create. To my knowledge, these courses are the largest and most thorough courses in Ableton Live production available on the internet. So if that sounds interesting to you, you can check out this link up here. Anyway, let's move on to the next reason that commitment is so important, and that's CPU resources. Even with modern computers, if you have hundreds of tracks with long effect chains and you're using modern mixing tactics like oversampling, you'll always be fighting the roof of your computer's processing power. Sooner or later, you'll have to increase the buffer size to stay within the limits, and eventually you'll find yourself either freezing tracks or being forced to make commitment decisions in the middle of your workflow. Now, often this can come at the worst times, right when you're in the middle of a work session. But instead, if you're committing to audio early and often, you can manage your CPU load easily and with grace. Now I will admit, especially with modern computers such as the Apple Silicon laptops, and even more so the new Mac Studio, CPU challenges with music production are starting to become less of an issue. But even so, if you have millions of tracks running all at the same time with loads of inter-track dependencies and so on, you can still run into the fourth reason you should commit to audio, and that's glitches, errors, and crashes. No one has ever used a DAW without glitches and the occasional dreaded crash. Thankfully, Ableton's undo history system and set recovery is amazing, and I rarely ever lose any of my precious work if I experience a crash. But I can confidently say that when I began really committing more to audio, crashes became less and less of a thing. Again, it doesn't matter how fast your computer's processor is, if there is a software bug, you're gonna get a crash. The best way to avoid bugs, of course, is to keep your software up to date. But also, to create less chances for odd fringe bugs to occur in your system, how do you do that? Well, you commit to audio early and often. Now, when I say commit to audio early and often, I don't mean every single track in your set. What I mean is learning to achieve a healthy balance between the tracks that you commit to audio and tracks that remain MIDI or with long effect chains. I'll commonly leave a couple of my drum tracks as MIDI, and I'll also leave lead parts like vocals or synths with full effect chains because I like to have extra flexibility there. But to drive this point home, and to show you the difference that commitment can make, let me show you the difference between two sets that I'm presently working on that are going to go on a release together. The first one I've been intermittently working on for about four years, the other track I made in two weeks. Let's check it out. Okay, so here's the set I was telling you about that I started four years ago. You can see there's a lot of MIDI everywhere. You can see um, also that <laughs> I have tracks with very long effect chains on them just running willy-nilly, and I have yeah, frozen tracks with a bunch of MIDI notes in it, right? And again, this, tra this track has taken me four years to put together versus another one I'm about to show you. Okay, now here's the second set, and you can see that I only have a couple drum tracks that are MIDI. Mainly all the drums, other than this track, this track, and that track, are actually audio, right? Moving on to the bass, the main bass line remains in MIDI, but everything else is audio. In the melodic section especially, there's just mainly audio. I mean, look at just how much is being committed here. And to be honest, I flew through this song, and I think it sounds about as good as anything I've ever made. Awesome. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this video, and I challenge you to simply try to make a tune where over 75% of your tracks are committed to audio. I think that you'll be pleasantly surprised by the efficiency and joy that holy matrimony to your audio can bring to your music. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.